How you going, buddies? So let's talk about phonology, speech sounds today, shall we? Uh, European languages tend to have around 35 distinctive speech sounds, uh, phonemes as they are called. Uh, Pamanyungan languages have fewer. And if we begin with the vowels, some Pamanyungan languages have three vowel phonemes, i, a and u. Uh, others have six. And in the languages that have six vowels, there are also long vowels, e, a and u. Uh, the Ngara language, which I have studied and also speak, is one of the languages with six vowel phonemes. And long vowels can only occur in stressed syllables. And as it so happens, it is always the first syllable of a word that receives main stress, irrespective of how long the word may be. So uh, that works the same way as in our neighboring language here in Scandinavia, Finnish. Uh, so we get minimal pairs like Mogoro, spotted scat, and Mogoro, unmarried girl. Uh, and Ngara does not have diphthongs. However, these two rules seem not to apply to English loanwords. If we look at these two words here, first we have motoka with a long vowel in the end. And here we have motoka driver from Australian English, as, as I'm sure you can hear, uh, with a diphthong. Uh, something I should mention when it comes to vowels is that in languages with few vowel phonemes, the pronunciation of the vowels uh, varies quite a lot depending on context. And it varies a lot more than in European languages, for example, that have many vowel phonemes, languages such as Swedish and Danish. So just to give you one Nara example, we have uh, a transitive verb here in the present tense, piriri, which means is scratching. And I'm sure you can see that these two are minimal pairs, uh, but they may not sound like minimal pairs to the one who is not familiar with uh, how things work in languages with few vowel phonemes. So what happens? Uh, when this vowel occurs before a retroflex consonant. What is a retroflex consonant? It's a characteristic of the Pamanyungan languages. Retroflex consonants are pronounced with the tip of the tongue bent backwards. Uh, and these four retroflex consonants are spread all over the continent. So we have er, like in English, we have r, n, and r. So, before a retroflex consonant, this vowel is centralized, it's moved down, and in fact becomes a. So this is periri, man. Uh, if we put these two words in a sentence together, they become even more dissimilar which has to do with the fact that most Pamanyungan languages are split ergative with common nouns and names taking the ergative absolutive uh, case marking pattern in transitive and detransitive clauses. So lu here is one of the Ngara ergative allomorphs. So here we have piriri lu, piriri pulala. The man is scratching himself. And pulala is the reflexive pronoun. It's the only one they have. It's used for all uh, persons. So that's a little bit about vowels. So looking more at the consonant inventories, uh, I have already mentioned the retroflex consonants. Another characteristic 
uh, of Pamanyongan languages is that they have two R sounds, which I have already uh, demonstrated. One with the tip of the tongue bent backwards, like in English, and one with the tip of the tongue forwards. Uh, now this may uh, be a sharp trill rrr, in some languages, or it may be just a flap rrr, in other languages. And in yet other languages, uh, it varies depending on context. Uh, also, uh, Pamanyongan languages are very big on nasals and stops. Uh, nasals are sounds that are produced with the flow of air going through the nose. The nasal cavity, you can try for yourself if you like. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, and so on. Uh, stops are also called plosives. The reason being that uh, a stop is produced uh, when we stop the flow of air at some point in the mouth. We let a certain amount of air pressure build up behind the stop. And when we release it, there is almost like a small explosion. If I exaggerate a little bit, we have p, t, and k. So, uh, Pamanyongan languages are big on stops and nasals. Some languages have five, like in Ngara, some languages have six. Uh, by the way, as you can see, I have not written uh, the phonetic symbols here. Uh, rather, I have written the different sounds as we write them in Ngara, uh, which means that we have a number of digraphs. A digraph consists of two letters next to each other that together uh, form one sound or denote one sound, as I illustrated here. Uh, one thing I should mention about stops uh, in Pamanyongan languages is that uh, the distinction voiced voiceless, uh, which is relevant in most languages around the world, is not relevant in Pamanyongan languages. Uh, so if you say P or B, it is the same sound. If you say T or D, it is also the same sound. Uh, so what is relevant is not the voiced, voiceless contrast, but rather where in the mouth uh, a stop is produced. You can check for yourself if you like, if, you, if a sound is voiced or voiceless by placing a couple of fingers here. Uh, a voiced sound makes use of the vocal cords which are in here. A voiceless sound doesn't. So if you feel this area vibrating, it's the vocal cords that are vibrating uh, and that means that the sound is voiced. Yes. Something that I found very difficult in the beginning when I was learning Ngara was to figure out where the words began and ended uh, because the Aborigines speak very fast and words can get very long and so it was difficult. But uh, we have the stress rule that I mentioned, of course, and also there are in all languages phonotactic constraints. What are those? They are rules for where uh, uh, sounds can occur in a word and in what order. And usually different combinations are allowed in the beginning and in the end of words. So that was very helpful. And you can see I have two lists here. I'm not 100% sure about this one. Most of the words beginning with a T 
uh, seem to be loan words. But uh, yes, otherwise these are the sounds that the words begin with and end with. Well, I will finish there for the time being, so I will see you later.